ha 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 I wasn't going to include that in the video, but I think I'm going to because it may be as ridiculous as I'm sure I feel like it was. And it may just be good to show there is a human side of me. You ever have something like, not in your throat, but it's kind of like below your neck. You know what I mean? You can feel it in there. It's uh, it just it's like phlegm or something caught up in there. I've been trying to get rid of it before I could even start this video, but I couldn't get anything done. So I... <laughs> I figured I'd try something different. Unfortunately, I already had the camera rolling when I was doing it. I was like, oh, I'll just cut that out. I may just leave it in. I may just I may just leave it in. We'll, we'll, we'll see. If not, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where today you guys saw in a previous video that we won, of all the cars, all the cars we've been on, we won a Ford Taurus. A Ford Taurus. Not that there's anything wrong with a Ford Taurus. I just, I think the Ford Taurus is kind of an older boring i don't know you know what now that i think of it older boring that fits the theme of the channel old boring american cars for the most part right there's nothing wrong with the ford taurus guys i've had i let me tell you something before i became a dealer long before i was a dealer let me just put it this i have had countless numbers of ford tauruses and mercury sables i mean countless numbers generally speaking they're pretty good cars. They're fairly basic. There's nothing really fancy or spectacular or special about them, but they're great, comfortable commuter cars. And this one's got 77,000 miles on the odometer. We won it for a winning bid of 800 bucks, and it cost me 1,100 out the door um, because I was too lazy to go to the bank and sit in a drive-through line at Chase for an hour to get a cashier's check. I just, I just opted to pay with a credit card and be done with it. So. $1,100 out the door. We are going to go pick it up. I got the trailer behind me because I have nobody here to help me today. Um, so regardless of whether it runs and drives or not, it says it runs and drives, but regardless of that, it's going on the trailer. We're going to load it up, take it for a test drive, see how it does. And we may just take that thing right on down to Weird Beard and be like, hey man, got one. Got one for you. You got to buy this. I'll sell it to him. I'll be like, you got to buy this one, Weird Beard. It's a great car. So uh, let's get down to IA. Let's go pick it up. We'll take it for a test drive before we load it. See what we think. We'll go from there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've got our title, we've got our paperwork, everything is good to go. Um, the only thing is, is you see this trailer right here? I'm sure it's difficult to see, but there's a little bitty half ton truck sitting here, uh, getting ready to try to pull this ginormous trailer behind it. Honestly, I feel like that trailer is far too big, but it is a bumper pull trailer. I mean, it's not a fifth wheel, so I guess... I guess that, that Chevy can handle it. Hopefully, it's at least got a 4.8. But they're blocking the entire entrance uh, where you pick up and, and, and do these cars, man, where they bring these cars out. Like, they're literally just sitting here. They've been trying to get this trailer attached for over half an hour now. And every time they attach it, they take it back off. Then they attach it, take it back off. And, I mean, they just do it over and over again. In the meantime, you got a bunch of trucks with big trailers and semis and everything trying to get in and out of here. And they're making it real difficult for the loaders. Or, look, please. Public service announcement. All right. Move your stuff out of the way, man. That's that's all I'm saying. It, please, like, 
if you got to drag it up a little bit or drag it back, whatever, just move it out of the way. Do not block an entire entrance like that. That is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, 100%. There's no, there's no reason for it. There's no reason for this. It's difficult for trucks to navigate in and out of here. Now, imagine semi-trucks trying to come in and get out of here. Now, get, now, don't get me wrong. These are professional drivers out here, so they're managing it. But it's it's I've seen it. It's a pain for the for the drivers and it's a pain for the loaders as well. Let's hope we get our uh, our car here soon. I was hoping while I was recording it would uh, pop up out here because they've loaded everybody else. I'm the only one left, and I don't know if they're uh, I don't know if they're actually going to drive it out. I asked them if they could drive it out. I don't know if they're going to drive it out or if they're going to uh, bring it out on a loader. But I don't want it on the trailer. I want to take this thing for a test drive first. Because once I take it on a drive and get a first-hand look at it, at that point, I'm going to know, is this something we can just take from here and go see if Weird Beer wants to buy this? Or is this something we got to take from here and we got to take it back to get cleaned? Is it going to need work done and all that other stuff? So that's what we're about to find out, is, is if we're lucky, it's something that we're going to be able to just pick up and take off with. This is my loader right here. All right, it looks like it's here, guys. Let's go ahead and drop it. Oh boy, I didn't realize it was that bad. Well, boys and girls, that's how it goes, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's missing a mirror. As long as the doors work, I'm good with it. Um, he just told me that uh, the reason they didn't drive it out was because the battery's dead. And he said when the batteries are dead, they don't generally drive them out. Um, first impressions, how do I feel about it? I feel like it's not pretty. And I also feel like if it does run, which I have no doubts that it does, uh, I think I'm okay with it. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter how I feel about it. It's 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 ours now, guys. Like whether we whether we like it or not, this car belongs to us. I kind of wish it had been dropped somewhere other than right here in the middle of the uh, of the lot, though. But uh, I'll go ahead and get this thing fired up real quick. You can see we've got the, uh, oh man, we got the GNC 1224 with us today, boys. And the reason is, is I killed my, uh, my GB150, my NOCO. I, I wanted to call it a Norco. <laughs> my NOCO GB150 uh, couldn't handle those old school cars at the, uh, at the lot last week. And uh, it crapped out, man. It did. So I got to order another GB150 because it is just not feasible to carry this giant thing all around Copart. I think this will be all right, guys. Um, like I said, she ain't she ain't pretty, but she's low miles. You know, give it a bath, vacuum it out. It seems to run all right. No gas. Power steering works. What about air conditioning? Let's see how the AC does. Please come on. It's definitely dirty, so I'm going to take it to the house and clean it. Important window works. That window also works. The headliner is decent. Hopefully you can see the headliner is all right. Whew, man. This thing is blowing out straight heat. No cold AC coming out of this, so I got the AC on, right? Yeah, yeah, max AC. There she goes, there she goes, there she goes. Yes, yes, cold air conditioning, cold air conditioning. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking, guys. Now we're getting some, now we're cooking with, well, whatever your preferred method of cooking is. The back seat looks brand new. There are some cigarette burns in the front seat though, so obviously a smoker. We've got good ride on the front with good tread. Good ride with good tread. On the back, what do we have? Hell, I don't even see it. I don't even see it. 
There's no name brand on this. Oh, it's been rubbed off. Curb rash. Curb rash. Wow. Uh, both sides of the car are pretty dinged up, but do I think we can make a profit? I do. I do think we can make a profit on. I think we'll be able to sell this, make a few dollars. Now, at $1,100 out the door as is, uh, are we going to make a killing? No, sir. No. But unfortunately, that's how this goes sometimes, guys. Sometimes you just got to be happy to make just a few hundred dollars. And that's exactly what I'm hoping for right now. I'm hoping that this will be one. I mean, it runs great. 77,000 miles. It's quiet. It sounds good. It needs a thorough cleaning. And I'm going to take care of that. We'll give it a good cleaning. Oh, damn it. Is that a stick? A stick stuck under the hood. Lovely. Give it a thorough cleaning, man. Try to make it look pretty. Get the writing off of it. So this is one we will be taking back to the house. Oh, man. Ashtray. Ashtray is actually clean. I guess they never used it. 42 miles to empty. 77,104 miles. Nice cold air. Windshield washers work. That's a plus. All right, let me get buckled up. Let's get on the road. All right, finally. I had to cut the damn uh, zip tie off of here because they they zip tied it around the steering wheel so you couldn't, you literally couldn't move. You, there's no way you could go anywhere with this car. I got nothing to cut it with so I had to sit there with a screwdriver and just bend it back and forth until eventually it came off. So we don't have far that we can go before we run out of gas. It shifts. There's overdrive. Yeah, there's overdrive. Sorry, there's overdrive. Yes, sir. She shifts. The steering is straight. Temperature is good. Air conditioning is good. Yeah, this is decent. It actually rides really well. The brakes... Brakes are good as well. Very nice. No vibrations. We can get it down this way. We can get up to speed a little bit. go let's let's hammer it full sin baby 55 there's 60 yeah there's 60 smooth as butter man no joke okay so this is another one guys uh we'll put some fresh fuel in it i'll fill it up make sure it's got a full tank this is nice I'm going to go ahead and turn around now because we are extremely short on uh, on fuel at the moment. But it it's ugly. You know what I mean? It's, it's an ugly duckling, but it runs and drives very well. And contrary to what you might believe, there's a market for this car. There is. Now, are we going to pull 2500 out of it? Not a chance. Not a chance. I think, honestly, if you put this car up for... Oh, can we make it around this? Can we make it? Yeah, we can make it. There we go. I think if you put this car up for... I, I, I would list it for $17.50, try to get $15 out of it. It should bring $15. I think it could bring more if it wasn't in such bad cosmetic condition. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. Both sides of the car has got damage, but she does run and drive very well with working windows, working air conditioning. And for that, I believe this is a $1,500 car. So, you know, we might make a few dollars on it. We're, we're not going to make much. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. You can't be, you can't be greedy. Cars are temperamental creatures, man. You know? And when you're bidding sight unseen, which I never, ever recommend doing, never bid sight unseen, guys. It's exactly what I did on this one. 
I did not come out here. I did not look at it first. In the pictures, it didn't look like it was, you know, it didn't look like it was smashed up that bad. But uh, yeah, lo and behold, it is. So, you know, if we can make a few hundred dollars on this, I'm going to be happy. And we can send it down the road, and I believe someone else is going to get a great deal on a car. I do. Uh, it won't be pretty, but they're going to get something that's going to be solid. It's going to be reliable. And that's something that I can feel good about. And if you're wondering, is this a salvage title? No, it is not. I have a clear green Oklahoma title. This is not an insurance car. I don't know how this car ended up here. And, uh, you know, now we have it. So, you know what it's time for now. Let's get this... Ford Taurus. <laughs> it's almost laughable. They're good cars, man. They are. They really are. Uh, let's get this on the trailer. There we go. Get lined up. Get it on the trailer. Get it strapped down. Get it back to the house so we can take it and get it all cleaned up and ready to go down to Weird Beard. All right, guys, there she is. She's loaded up, she's ready to go. We'll get her back to the house, get her cleaned up. And uh, <laughs> well, we'll see what she looks like with a wash. I don't think it's gonna make it look much better, but I think with a wash and a vacuum, I think we can, we can make this thing look a little bit better. It's hot out here, so let's jump in the truck, get on the highway, get back to the house. Whew. Oh, that air conditioner feels good. All right, we made it back, guys. I went ahead and dropped the trailer. And I, I left the car running. You're not supposed to do that, but I left it running the whole trip back, hoping that the battery would come back to life because, truthfully, there's hardly any money left on the table here for us to make any profit off of it. Uh, let me turn this off. We're not quite ready to wash the car yet. But I shut the car off. I expected the battery was going to come right back to life, and it didn't. The battery was completely dead. Like, as soon as you shut it off, that was it, man. No power, nothing. So that battery is shot. So I'm going to go find a battery. So I'm going to see if I can find a competitive price on a battery. Uh, maybe I can order it online and use Honey to save me a... Whoa! Hey, now. Use Honey to save me a few dollars on the battery. Uh, that sucks. So as you can see, I've got the battery taken out of it. You see how dirty the engine bay is. It's filthy. We're going to get all this cleaned up, guys. All this. Going to get the tires cleaned. I know it probably don't make a lot of sense. We're going to clean the wheels, clean the tires, put some tire shine on it, give the car a good wash, get the riding off of it, and try to make it look a little more presentable. I even debated for about two minutes replacing the doors. I thought, you know what? Taurus parts are, I mean, they're readily available. So we would need one two what else we got over here let's take a look i think all four doors yeah three four doors mirror this fender the bumpers scraped up you could probably get away with leaving that the way it is what about the hood the hood's all right I, 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 the amount of time it would take me to swap four doors and a fender and we'd still be left with a scraped up bumper plus the battery plus the price of the car I don't know guys I just don't see it I don't see the money I don't see it being worth the time and money invest I'm gonna assume on the cheap like the bare minimum cheap it's gonna be $75 a door unless you want to change out your own windows if you want to take all your windows your regulators and everything out and handles and everything you might be able to get them for like 50 bucks a piece you're still looking at $200 for four doors 
if you choose to get them with the regulators, glass and everything, you're probably looking more like $100 a door. So you're talking about $400. And then you take the risk of do the regulators work, do the windows work, you're gonna have to swap them out anyway. And then finally, the amount of time. And that's what it really comes down to. How much is your time worth? Time isn't free, guys. I, I, I know that uh, a lot of people don't take their time into consideration when they're flipping a car. But I got a lot of projects going. I got a lot of things happening. So I really have to sit here and decide how much of my time is worth putting into this. And the amount of time it's going to take to just clean it, put a battery in it, and, and get it ready to make it look decent. That's about all I can afford to put into this. I do not have the time available to spare on four doors and a fender. And if I paid somebody to do it, again, wouldn't be profitable. Just doesn't make sense. The car is not worth it, guys. I think the best thing to do is to sell it as is, clean it up, make it look as good as we can. It does run and drive good. I filled it up with gas while it was on the trailer, filled it up with gas, we'll go put a battery in it and, and cross our fingers and hope that we can make a buck out of this car. So you know what's really helpful is if you can get more than one person to help you out. That way you can accomplish more things in the same amount of time. So I have got to go pick up this battery. I found a battery at Advanced Auto Parts for like 68 bucks after you uh, turn in your core, which I've got the core in the truck already ready to go. So we got Nick, Asa was out here. I don't know where Asa went. Uh, if, he wants to earn if he wants to earn stuff, he's gotta come out here and help out too. Where'd he go? I guess we'll see. But anyway, Nick is out here cleaning up these tires. They're going to give this car a bath. And we're going to do the best we can degreasing this engine. But to do that, we're going to have to take it to the car wash. It's far too dirty to clean with just, uh, you know, water faucet pressure. That's not going to work. There's, there's Asa. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick up the uh, battery. They're gonna stay here. They're gonna work on cleaning and I'll have them dry it. They'll make it look a whole lot better than it currently does. And uh, I got the mirror too. I ordered the mirror. It'll be here tomorrow from Amazon Prime. It was $28 for the mirror. The battery is like 68 bucks. So I'm gonna let these guys get to it. I'm gonna go pick up the battery. We'll come back and see how she looks. All right, so we've gotten quite a bit accomplished off camera. In the course of about an hour and a half, we have washed the car cleaned out the interior, cleaned all the grime and mold and mildew that was growing around the door seals off and all of the gunk in the trunk. We have cleaned the wheels and the tires, wiped down the dash, the steering wheel. Guys, if I can see a clip clearly of how nasty this steering wheel was just a little while ago, I'm going to replay that for you right now so that you can see how much grime we took off. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret on how I do that. It's actually really simple. I use, uh, it doesn't matter, degreaser. Believe it or not, degreaser, purple power, simple green, doesn't matter what brand you use, but you could turn your steering wheel from what it looked like just a minute ago, all grimy, like literally guys, I it's probably the worst steering wheel I have ever seen. And now take a look at it. Look how, look how gorgeous this is. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful all the way around. Same thing with the shifter. Shifter was covered in grime, all gone. The stereo was covered in greasy, grimy substance, gone. Headlight switch, gone. The door right here, this was as bad as the steering wheel, guys. And now look at it. This whole thing was completely nasty. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to vacuum this thing out real quick. I'm going to pull it out into the sun. I'm going to let you take a look at it. You can tell me what you think. But before we get any further with it, let's see what we can do with this engine bay. I, I want you to definitely see it and remember it, all right? Fairly disgusting and nasty. I'm telling you, a clean engine bay can really be the difference between whether a, a car will get top dollar or uh, bottom dollar. And since there's no money for us to make on this one, we really got to do everything we can to squeeze every dollar out of it possible. So I've got me this this is not simple green. It's a simple green bottle. It's some kind of degreaser, maybe purple power or something that's in it. And I just, what I do is I like to spray liberally. When I say liberally, guys, I mean like soak it, saturate it. All right, really look at all the, look at all the grime and stuff that's in here. You know what I mean? That's absolutely nasty. And it's definitely gonna take away from any potential money we could be making on this. So just, uh. In fact, it's on too broad of a pattern. You want it more focused. There we go. 
there we go like really really get down on it man hit this sucker with everything you got and i guarantee you when we come back here in just a few minutes she's gonna look completely different and there she is now guys look at this look how clean that is look all the grime is along the edges here is gone look how gorgeous this engine is right it looks absolutely beautiful guys if i do say so myself yep we got her done we even cleaned the hood so the hood looks pretty decent too I'm telling you man, i'm trying to squeeze every dollar i can squeeze out of this car all right time to vacuum it out and i'll show you what she looks like i'll tell you what guys uh obviously i've got new cars i've got some really nice cars back at the house right um but i can still and i'm very thankful for this i can still appreciate the way an old car like this still runs and drives reliably i've been driving it around i like to do that before i send it down to weird beard i don't want any surprises on his doorstep you know what i mean i don't want him to get something for me and and think oh man he's hooking me up and then you know find out he's getting a dud i'm not trying to do that so i like to drive these cars around myself try to make sure they're good to go obviously you have to you have to make a decision about what things are worth fixing what's affordable to fix and what things you're just going to have to pass on to somebody else weird beard mentioned that in the video on the cadillac that he recently did guys some cars are just not profitable and if they're not profitable you got to sell them as they are the key to doing this is not hiding the damage not hiding the issues i i know it sounds crazy but people will trust you and buy a car from you more times when you're honest than when you lie once you start lying to people and screwing people out of money word gets around guys word gets around fast and before you know it you've ruined your reputation so when you're honest with people i have always had the ability to sell more cars being truthful and upfront with people about issues the cars have than i have by lying and trying to get and i've done both i'm not i'm not you know going to sit here and act like i haven't i have i have absolutely sold cars and lied to sell them in the past and let me tell you something guys it's not a good feeling it feels much better when you're upfront and honest with people and you're making honest money i know that sounds corny but it's the truth i sleep a lot better at night i really do and i'm sure weird beard is the same way all right guys this car is whew, <laughs> she's doing great she's running and driving great so yeah it's an ugly duckling but somebody will buy it because there is a behind for every seat guys that's a fact somebody will buy this car and it's going to make somebody a solid low mileage a to b vehicle it really will so now that i've talked year off let's show you the car here she is and all of her i don't know you do you, do you want to call it glory i don't know guys for better for worse this is the car i picked up and at the end of the day this is kind of what it's all about guys you do the best you can with what you got you know it's like a card game sometimes you're dealt a great hand sometimes you're dealt a really bad hand the important thing to remember is how to play the game all right good hand or not play the best hand you got put your best foot forward and move on that as long as you win more than you lose guys that's that's really all that matters at the end of the day go to bed with a clear conscience knowing that you did the best you could there it is like i said she's never going to be pretty it's it's too it's too far gone for that guys i'm talking you know you need the mirror we'll put on another time i will put that on off camera for sure but you need all four doors fender bumper the hood's hail damage that it's it's just there's no there's no point there's no point but i still believe it will be a solid car for somebody i'll show you guys the inside now that we've got it uh vacuumed and it took a lot of cleaning guys a lot of cleaning to get this thing straight but 
There she is. Show you the front. It was so disgusting, guys. Like, it, there, there was so much grease all over this. Same thing with the steering wheel. It was just a hot mess. It was disgusting. A Scotch-Brite uh, scrubby, you know what I mean? Not a, a not one of those metal scrubbers, the green, green pad scrubbers that you use for like dishes and stuff. One of that combined with some degreaser and uh, spend about 10, 15 minutes really scrubbing everything with the scrubby pad portion. And it'll make that thing look branded. Guys, I didn't think this was gonna come out. I, I thought that th this was a total loss on the steering wheel. But there she is, guys. She looks, she looks fairly decent. And 77,000 original miles on the odometer. Let's pop the hood one more time. Take a look under there. It's had a little had a little time to dry now. So hopefully it looks a little oh yeah. Yeah, look at that. I'm happy with it. So I guess there's really nothing left to do. Because for me, I'm not gonna do this on camera, um, but for me, I am going to uh, look at this original motorcraft plug wires with the numbers original motorcraft coil uh here's what i'm going to do uh tomorrow amazon prime is delivering that mirror i'm going to install the mirror because you want to have all your mirrors right so i'm going to put a mirror on it i'm going to do one last look over the car and then i'm sending it down to weird beard i'm going to put it on the trailer take it down to weird beard drop it off with him drop the trailer off down at uh, ar headquarters and that's a wrap for this car we pretty much got a car from start to scratch guys from start to finish from start to scratch you can tell it's the end of the day right from start to finish from buying it picking it up getting it ready and sending it in literally it's been just a matter of a few hours guys it's been about four hours total from the time i went to pick up this car until now which will be the time that it's pretty much ready to go It'll take me about 20 30 minutes to install the mirror and that's it that's it and we'll come back on this one for sure and i'll let you guys know if we were able to turn a profit or not on the four tours but until then drop your comments down below and tell me if you think there's any profit to be had right now we were eleven hundred dollars out the door the battery came out to about 70 so you're looking at 1170 that doesn't include my time that doesn't include gas and the mirror was 30 dollars. so what we're 12 $1,200? I don't, I don't see it. I don't think there's any profit margin there for us other than what I make off of you guys watching this video, which brings me to the point of today's car. You, there had to be a point, right? You didn't think I just went out and bought a Ford Taurus because I thought this is a car that's going to make a bunch of money. No, no, guys. A Ford Taurus is most likely never going to make you a bunch of money. The purpose of this video was to let you guys see that it's like fighting for scraps out here. It's difficult, really difficult. So for car dealers that are out here without YouTube, car dealers that are out here literally just trying to survive off of car flipping alone, it's a difficult time. It's a real difficult time. Prices are really, really high across the board. Come on guys, this is a car that not too long ago, a few months ago, we would have picked a car like this up for three, $400 tops. 800, 800 with 11 out the door? That is just an example to show you guys how desperate the situation is. And a lot of people are asking me, why aren't you out buying more cars? This is why. Guys, I'm not going to go out there and just toss good money after bad. I'm not, I'm not out here ready to just toss money down the drain. It ain't like that here. Uh, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make good financial sense at all. Now, on some things, maybe. You know, good, good content cars, maybe. But on a Ford Taurus... No, and that's the problem. We don't get a ton of really cool, unique cars here that are reasonably priced, that are affordable. And at this point in time, there are no cars that are going for reasonable amounts of money. I just got through talking to uh, Lucky from Lucky's Wheels and Deals, man, and he said the same thing. He said, it's crazy out here. He said, it is crazy. The prices are so high, it's making it difficult for dealers to make any money. So thankfully, uh, that concludes that whole speech, and that brings me to thanking you guys for making this possible. Without you guys watching this video, that car wouldn't be here. I promise you, I, there's no way I would have brought that car here. None at all. Um, but because you guys watch this video, we'll be able to make this car profitable from you watching this video. So thank you to all of you 
that watch the video. If you enjoyed the content, give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. Don't forget to click the bell notification icon. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Auto Auction Rebuilds. I still can't believe I bought the Ford Taurus. Until next time, folks, stay safe out there. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.